Ladies and gentlemen, today we are honored to have a friend with us who is behind the Assyrian genocide recognition by the Republic of Armenia 2015. For people who don't know, Mr. Harut Sasunyan is a well-known Armenian-American writer, public activist, and uh, publisher of the California Courier. Mr. Frederick Duman from the SAFO Center, and I had a meeting with him in 2015. Shortly after our meeting, uh, he was planning to go to Armenia. Mr. Sasunyan delivered a letter from us to the former president of the Republic of Armenia. And as many of you recall, the Republic of Armenia recognized the Assyrian genocide in 2015. On behalf of the SAFO Center, we would like to thank you and uh, Dr. Anahit Hosrayawa, along many others who were behind uh, this recognition. Mr. Sasunya, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to join you. This year is the 104th anniversary of the Assyrian, Armenian, and Greek genocide. The floor is yours, Mr. Sasunyan. Please give us your message regarding the genocide of 1915. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, it is very important that uh, all people, no matter what ethnic uh, group, nationality, color, religion, all people who have suffered a genocide or mass human rights violation should all join hands and try to uh, bring justice to the great injustice done to them a century ago. This is why I welcome joining hands between Armenians, Assyrians, and Greeks, and uh, who suffered around the same time by the Ottoman Turks a century ago. Now, unfortunately, the Turkish government for the last 100 years has been denying that a genocide took place. And they come up with all sorts of uh, false uh, stories and lies about wh why it was not genocide. All of us, we know from our own families what took place. We don't know this from books or movies or stories. We know from our own family uh, members how they suffered. And we all lost a lot of members of our families. And that's why we, we are all living in the uh, United States so far away from our historic homeland. No other reason why we would be uh, in, in this part of the world uh, if it was not for the, for the genocide. Now, in the case of the Armenian genocide, the Turkish denialists say that uh, it was not genocide, it was civil war, which is a lie say that Armenians uh, collaborated with the Russians during World War I, which was also a lie. But once we tell people that not only the Turkish government mm -hmm. had a plot to eliminate the Armenians, but also the Greeks and the Assyrians, and we know that the Assyrians and the Greeks never collaborated with any outside force, nor Russia, nor nobody else. So the, the lie becomes more obvious, the Turkish lie becomes more obvious when we combine the three genocides together. You know, the Turkish government is a very powerful country now. It's the uh, 15th largest economy in the world, and it has the second largest uh, military in NATO after the United States. So they, they, they uh, have a lot of pressure on a lot of countries not to recognize the genocide. So any one of us by ourselves, we can only do so much against a powerful uh, enemy and a denier like Turkey. So, but if we join hands, we all have different contacts. We know different people, different politicians. We, we live around the world. Uh, we have neighbors, we have relatives, we have congressmen, senators who represent us. And 
if we join hands and work together and not not any one of us uh, nothing should divide us uh, everything else is secondary uh, we we are we were subjected to the same mass crime and we need to uh, we have a common cause and a common battle and we need to fight it doesn't matter how long it takes it's already taken 104 years as of now but if it takes another a hundred years, we're willing to do it. If we're not here, our children, grandchildren will continue the battle. And for those who say that you're fighting an impossible battle, that Turkey is so strong that there isn't much you can do. Well, my answer is Turkey is strong today, but no country in history, Turkey or any other country, will be the same type of country uh, forever. Uh, the time will come when countries get larger, get smaller, and sometimes they totally disappear from the map. And so it is true that Turkey is strong today, but it will not be strong forever. The time will come. Things will happen in the world. Uh, wars, civil wars, uh, uh, disease, uh, um, other uh, unexpected uh, tragedies that Turkey will not be the Turkey we know today. So don't give up because if you give up already the battle is lost. So don't hand the uh, defeat uh, by yourself. Don't be defeated by, uh, don't defeat yourself. So fight as much as you can and try to survive. And the most important thing, try to pass on the history of your nation to the next generation because no matter what we do how well we do if our battle our struggle ends with us then we haven't accomplished anything it has to continue yeah you know we all know the jewish story of for 2000 years every generation of jews said next year in jerusalem next year in jerusalem 2000 years and at that time it was like a pipe dream in a fantasy nobody believed it but in the 1900s the time came where circumstances world wars and other things happened there was an opportunity but the the children and the grandchildren and the grandchildren passed on to each other the dream of next to jerusalem and they made it happen so we need to do the same thing we need to say next year in van or mush or uh, we have to yeah continue we need to continue continue the the memory keep the memory alive keep the struggle alive and one day i guarantee you we will uh, uh, reach to, to our uh, goal thank you mr sarsunian uh, the genocide of 1915 occurred 104 years ago why is Turkey is still denying it. Well, t t Turkey has uh, gives its uh, Turkish leaders themselves give many reasons for denying, uh, but those are the lies. Uh, after I repeat a couple of the lies, then I will give you the real reasons, uh, what I think are the real reasons. The, uh, the Turks uh, say that there was no geno genocide, that there was a civil war that uh, uh, the Armenians died of disease and starvation. Uh, well, you know, all of these things are lies. There was a, a planned uh, uh, extermination of, of, of Armenians, Assyrians, and Greeks. And the real reason was a couple of things. One was the, uh, the young Turks who were in power at the time they had a pan-Turkic ideology, which was to uh, join Turkic nations from Turkey all the way to Central Asia. And they want to eliminate all the non-Turks uh, in between that big pan-Turkic uh, empire. And who were these uh, non-Turkic uh, people? They were the Armenians, Assyrians, and the Greeks. So they had to eliminate us in order to have a, a free uh, front all the way to uh, Turkestan. 
Now, that was one reason. The other reason was, as you know, uh, Armenians, Assyrians, and Greeks, they, uh, they, 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 they were uh, well-to-do. They owned properties. They owned churches, schools, cemeteries. And uh, the Turkish government was trying to, uh, they had their eyes on the property of the minorities. So by eliminating the Armenians, they also repossessed their properties, uh, not only you know houses and uh, plots of land, but also their historic homeland where they lived for thousands of years. And uh, as opposed to the Jews who were killed during the Holocaust uh, in Germany in a foreign land, the Armenians, the Greeks, and the Syrians, they were ki killed in their historic homeland. So besides just losing people, they also lost their, their homeland, their civilization, their culture, uh, their language, uh, their religion. And uh, many of them were forced to convert to Islam and be Turkified. And to this day, there are hundreds of thousands of Turks who have Syrian, Armenian, and Greek blood in them. And so far they've been hiding, but more and more of them are coming forward and saying, yes, my grandfather was an Armenian or a Syrian or, or, or Greek. We were Christians, and they want to come back to church. They, they're asking to be baptized. So already we see the first signs of the Turkish lie breaking down and the, the truth coming to the surface. So that's the reason why uh, the, uh, the Turks. Now, a secondary reason is that the Turks, uh, even though it's hard for us to believe, but the Turks are, they're, they're very proud people. So w w when you say to a Turk that your ancestors killed my ancestors, uh, and, and if they don't know anything about it, and a lot of Turks don't know anything about this because they don't teach about the genocide in, in their schools. So they know nothing. So when the first time they hear about it, that they're surprised, and they think it's a lie that, that we're make, making up a story against them. Of course we don't. And as they come to the West and they go on the Internet, because now everything is on the Internet, they can learn a lot. They're not just limited to uh, school education. They, they learn from uh, outside sources. So they, uh, they realize, and then uh, the first feeling they have is a feeling of shame. They're ashamed that their grandfather w was a mass murderer. And... Uh, and if if they don't know anything about it, they they are not easily willing to accept it. So there's a there's a degree of the shame. The other reason is that because we, we constantly repeat for hundred years, and we don't just talk about the genocide. We also say that we need restitution, reparation, and return the properties and return our lands back to us. So the Turkish government knows very well that just acknowledging the genocide is not enough. There's more to it than just saying, yes, we, we committed genocide against uh, the minorities. They, they know that the minute they acknowledge it, that Armenians, Greeks, and Assyrians are going to ask for their properties. Now, my answer mm -hmm. to Turks is, yes, you are right. We do ask for our properties back because it's ours, not yours. You stole it from us. You confiscated it. And you promised to give it back to us, which you never did. You took our bank accounts, our properties, lands, schools, houses, uh, etc. So yes, we, even if Turkey does not acknowledge the genocide, they 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 have to return what's uh, our properties back to us. So it's it's not just the genocide. So knowing that recognition of genocide has consequences, the the Turkish government very cleverly. Uh, every time we say yeah, there was a genocide, they say no. We say yes, they say no. We've been doing this for 104 years. And, and, and this serves the Turkish interest because if we continue saying yes, you did, and Turks say no, you, you didn't, and if it continues like this another 100, 200 years, we will always get stuck on point one, which is was there a genocide or not? All of us, three of us together, Syrians, Greeks, and Armenians, we have to come to a, a reach a conclusion that we no longer argue with Turks about the genocide. Genocide is a fact of history. It happened. We don't even argue about it. Just like with an ignorant uh, person, we don't argue if the person tells us that the earth is flat. 
The earth is not flat. Everybody knows it's round. We don't even argue about it. So if a Turk calls me and it has happened, they call me to argue with them over the genocide, I decline. I don't argue with them because it's a waste of my time to argue with an ignorant person who either doesn't know or doing it on purpose. It's just a waste of our time. So rather than wasting more time, another 100 or 200 years, us saying, yes, there was genocide, then Turks saying, no, there was no genocide, we should just say, listen, genocide is a fact, and, and we'll go on, and we demand our historic rights through European Court of Human Rights, through international courts, and through local courts, through uh, books, movies, uh, any kind of uh, you know political uh, action that we can bring so we should we should not anymore waste time arguing with turks over this nonsense that there was no genocide we know about the genocide we don't need the turks to tell us it was genocide we already know from our own family stories so they they have to acknowledge it and move forward we have to sit down and see how Turks can compensate for the major crime they committed in, in, in the 19, early 1900s. Uh, Mr. Sassunia, I have one more question, please. Uh, can you please share your thoughts with us? Why do you think the United States of America haven't recognized the genocide of 1915 yet? What is the calculation of the American politicians? Okay, this is a very uh, uh, confusing and complex subject, and a lot of people that don't understand, even our own people don't understand the, the basic facts of genocide recognition. Uh, I'm going to say something that will surprise you and, and uh, the viewers. The Armenian Genocide, and I give lectures about this around the world, In uh, so far I've spoken in 25 countries. The Armenian Genocide, contrary to what people say, not just you, Armenians also say the same thing. And I explained to Armenians and others that the Armenian Genocide not only was recognized by the U.S. government, but was recognized repeatedly and at the highest level of the U.S. government. Let me give you some facts quickly. Uh, in 1951, the U.S. government sent, sent an official document to the International Court of Justice, otherwise known as World Court, in which it says that there was a genocide against Armenians and, 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 and the Holocaust of the Jews. So already in 1951, the US government, at a very important official document level, recognizes the genocide. So normally, in 1951, would have stopped saying the Armenian genocide is not recognized. It is recognized. But then, let's move on forward. In 1975, the U.S. House of Representatives, the Congress, passed a resolution, which passed unanimously, calling it Armenian Genocide and, uh, and designating April 24, the anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, as uh, Genocide Day. That was in 1975. The House passed unanimously. Then in 1984, the House passed a second resolution saying the same thing again, Armenian Genocide Day, recognition of Armenian Genocide, using the word genocide. So that's, that's the second House resolution. Then in 1981, April 21, President Ronald Reagan, when he was president, he issued a presidential proclamation saying that Armenian Genocide uh, in, in, in a text and comparing it to the, to the Jewish Holocaust and the Cambodian uh, Genocide. So we have the Congress, we have the President, we have the U.S. government saying it. There have also been some court cases where the judges have given a verdict of the, of the genocide. So we have the three branches of the U.S. government uh, that have acknowledged the genocide. Now, where the confusion comes from is not the lack of recognition. It comes from the political side of the issue. For political reasons, U.S. presidents since Reagan have been avoiding to use the word genocide to describe what happened to Armenians and, 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 and Greeks. Because they, they consider Turkey an important strategic ally, a NATO ally, and they do not wish to antagonize the Turks. And, and you know, and I know, 
how sensitive the Turks are about about being accused of committing genocide. And, you know, 25, 28 countries have recognized Armenian genocide so far. And several of them have recognized also, thank God, the Greek genocide and the Syrian genocide. And the every time a country recognizes the genocide, Turkish government immediately starts threatening, screaming, trying to uh, undermine the recognition, not allow it to go through. And then after they pass a resolution in parliament, then the, the Turks say, oh, uh, we're going to withdraw our ambassador from your country and we're going to stop economic and military purchases. Okay, the Turks have done this many times. They've given the same threat and warning. But what has happened? For example, let, let me use the example of France. When France rec was recognized in the genocide, the uh, Turkish government said, we're going to interrupt our uh, import exports from France and we're going to withdraw our ambassador. They did that. But six months later, they returned the ambassador back to France. And the trade between France and Turkey is now not only as much as before, but double or triple of what it was before. So who needs who more? Does Turkey need France or France needs Turkey? France doesn't need Turkey. Turkey is the one that needs France, needs the United States. So I call this the phenomenon of the 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 tail wagging the dog the tail doesn't wag the dog the the dog is the one that uh, shakes his uh, tail and the tail in this case is turkey and the dog is uh, the, the rest of the europe or the united states uh, mr sasunian you gave us very important information in this program i would like to thank you very much and i hope in, in, nearly f in the future, we will come together and talk about this uh, important task again and again. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sasunian. You're welcome. It's my honor to join your, our common cause and common struggle.